Now for our first scripture reading from Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Let us begin. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had baptized just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends God's holy word. So, this is a uh, baptismal font. Font sounds like what? Another word. Say that again. Oh, that's so funny. Like different fonts on the computer, different... um, Hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, that is. Like, it's different, different fonts. You are correct. I was thinking like fountain. Font, fount, fountain. Like water. And this is a place that we make, where we put, where we make water, where we, where we place water. Um, Eliana, you want to touch that for me? What's it feel like? It's kind of warm. It's warm? Yeah, that's on purpose. Oh, look at you with gloves on. Are you cold? Okay. Jeremy, you want to touch that? Teresa? Yeah. It's just... It's just normal water, right? And then um, on a, when we're baptizing at the church, we put water in, in the font. And we just heard a story about Jesus getting baptized, right? And he went into a river. And he was like completely immersed in water. It's like his whole body. And there are traditions that do that. And actually, there are some churches that have, it's called a baptistry, in, in the front of the church. And most of the time, it's like hidden with a, a curtain. But it's like a big, big tub where people can get baptized. And they get completely dunked under the water. Um, and then they come up. And that's that's a part of the service. We have what's called a baptismal font. And put in water, and then when we're doing a baptism, uh, the pastor will, uh, and I'll do, you know, put my hand over it, and then I'll say a prayer to say, to ask the Spirit to rest upon this water, and we give it a special purpose that we use in, in worship. And, it's to, and it communicates a lot of things, baptism. But... Um, it talks how we are uh, cleansed from sin because water, we take water when we take baths, right? Um, <laughs> would have been smart if I thought to bring a towel too, but I, well, we'll figure that out later, right? Because um, we, we get cleansed from our sin. We're told that we're forgiven. Thank you, Mrs. Walsh. Um, that we are reminded that we are forgiven. And did you hear in that story how when Jesus was baptized, a dove, the Holy Spirit comes down and says, this is my beloved when we celebrate baptism, we are also reminded that we are beloved. And it's one of the things that I was thinking about as um, preparing for this morning is that using something that's every day, water, we need water to live, right? We drink water every day. Or you know, we take baths in it, we shower in it, we clean with it, right? And that God uses it for a special purpose so that we might know how much... Thank you, Jody just so that we might know how much that we're loved, that God promises to be with us through it all. And I was thinking how um, God uses us, normal human beings, uh, to communicate God's love to the world. And that's one of the amazing things that... Um, I'm having fun with the water. Um, that uh, that God... You know, sometimes... I can get teary-eyed sometimes when I think about that God can use me. God can use you. God can use all of us to do wonderful things, to do incredible things in the name with God's spirit and with God's power working in us so that we might communicate God's love in the world. 
um, there are some traditions where uh, the the pastor or the priest will bring an evergreen branch, right? And he'll dip it in the water and then he'll go, wow, wow, to the people to remind them of their baptisms. Did I get you? Did I get you? Did I get you? Right. Um, at the end of the service, I'm going to invite anybody who wants to to come forward and just to dip their fingers in the water and then make the sign of the cross on their forehead to remind themselves of their baptism. Do you want to do that? No? You don't have to. Okay. Um, but just remember that God can use you to do incredible things. And that's, gosh, that's just amazing, right? So when you're, and on those days when you're feeling like, you know, who am I? Remember that you are God's beloved and God can do incredible things through you. Will you say a prayer with me? Gracious God, thank you for using us to do big things, to do small things in great love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, but before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The image that has been sitting with me the last couple of weeks is that of being immersed in water and then emerging with the whip and it's warm and there's the sun and there's that glorious feeling and using uh, my hands to, uh, to shake the, the water from my eyes. And this might be torture with the cold weather that we had yesterday. Uh, and maybe the image more appropriate for today would be taking a, a really hot shower when you need to warm your bones. But wince, if you will, let's immerse ourselves in the waters of baptism. Emerging, we are cleansed. We are forgiven. We are loved. And we are joyous. For we are God's beloved. Let's just take a few breaths in that space. Beloved, we're expected to return to the shore, to re-enter to that which we left, to live changed, to live in as if in God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. But I must confess, like Peter, who wanted to build dwellings um, up on the top of the mountain at, for the transfiguration, can we just stay here? I confess that I, can we just float for a while <laughs> before re-entering? Because it's tough over there. Here in the water, on our backs, eyes looking up, blue sky, warm sun, we inhale, we are lifted, we exhale, we sink. With the spirit within us, we are lifted. When we try to do it all on our own, we sink. 
back on the shore. There's just so much work to do. Lord, have mercy. And it can be overwhelming. But as a reminder, we are not called to do everything and to fix every ill. We are called to do our part, to do our small part using whatever gifts God has given us to make a dent, to find joy in giving the best of ourselves and creating a masterpiece of our lives to the glory of God. Well, when you put it that way, right? The Spirit beckons us into the world. Christ's ministry began after his baptism, but you know he right, went right into the temptation, as do we, to give up, to give in, to lose heart. So today we remember our baptisms to remind us who we really are, God's beloved, and to that which we are called. So I am going to ask you some questions. The baptism, you know, there are different ways of phrasing these. These are the ones that jumped out at me as I looked at our, our worship book. And you're invited to answer them in your heart. These are the traditional questions of baptism. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God as you enter back into the world and walk up onto the shore? Do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Yes, hallelujah, amen. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? <laughs> There's no way that we can do this without God's grace and love working through us. So yes, yes we do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love to the best of our ability, yes, and cover all that we say and do with your grace, yes, Lord, yes. If our answer to those questions is yes, then we are ready to step out onto the shore in confidence and hope, believing that we make the world what it is. And we choose to make of it Christ's kingdom. It is our call to engage in ministry with the world and more specifically this community, going from the personal to the communal. Our call as a church. That's why we did a demographic study and talked to community leaders to know what the challenges are in, in, that the community faces. And now armed with our mission statement, Grace Presbyterian Church, connecting with people through Christ to serve the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of the community and the larger world. I've already got it memorized. Woohoo! And I said it in the right order this week. Um, cause last week, cause the, uh, the original one, the, it's, it was physical. We had written physical, emotional, and spiritual. And the session said, let's put spiritual first. And that seemed right. And I messed up last week, so, but grace abounds. And I remembered this week, grace Presbyterian church connecting with people through Christ to serve the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of the community and the world around us. God will use you, who are beloved, to create beloved community. I shared in my email message um, this week, extra Jesus points for you if you read it, that I had listened to a podcast, an interview with, it wasn't an interview, it was him sharing his story. Uh, Eric Whitaker, a composer, talk about the connection that he felt the first time he sang in a choir. And I read a poem this week in which a churchgoer admitted, you know, it's not the preacher, it's not the sense of duty, I go for the music, I go to sing. And when I do, I am reborn. 
I dream dreams for this congregation that allow space for the poets and the painters and the musicians to use their voice to connect with people through Christ, to introduce the life-giving tools of faith, forgiveness, justice work, mercy, sacrifice, self-love and neighbor love, community, generosity, love for creator and creation. What difference does faith in Jesus Christ make in your life? Because we live into forgiveness and justice work and mercy and sacrifice and self-love and neighbor love and community, generosity, love for creator and creation, and those are just the things that came off the top of my head. On this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, we can think about what was constructed on the shore of the world into which Martin had to re-enter. The institutional racism which he met with nonviolent resistance fueled by his faith. There's a wonderful speech by Valerie Kaur, a woman of deep faith and a commitment to justice, where she talks about the darkness of this time. And she says, rather than think of it as a tomb, let's think of it as a womb. And when we are giving birth, we are reminded to breathe and push. And there will be rebirth. We breathe every week together, praying that the Spirit might enter us so that when we leave this place, we might go out to serve in Jesus' name. Today, we remember our baptisms. Amen.